going on guys? I want to make a video uh, today. This is one that's going to be about something that you probably were never expecting me to make a video on because I wasn't actually and then I was listening to something today and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so powerful. I need to make a video on this. We as uh, you know, believers, I think that we can get, uh, you know, and the whole point of this whole course anyways is to show you what everyday life looks like. Well, everyday life uh, often at times comes with things that are manifested or seen by others and this specific video is completely irrelevant to all of that and it might, it might be maybe the, the most important of them. I, I, I don't know if I can really categorize value like that of, of these videos and topics but the way that you think as a believer plays such a significant part into your spiritual well-being uh, and, and no, by that, I don't mean, like, how are you, like, are you, uh, you know, good emotionally today? Like, it's not that, that God or, or I don't care about your emotions or something like that, but the point is, is, is your spiritual well-being, your spiritual state is vital to God and how, how, how you're doing in, in your spiritual uh, life in, in context of mindset specifically. So, I want to read a, a verse here in... Um, oh. I could, I could go on so many different scriptures. I'll just hit a few of them here, but we'll start on Colossians 3. Therefore, if you, on verse 1, Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Well, how do you keep seeking things above, like it says? Well, it says, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you have died and your life has been hidden with Christ. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body dead to immorality, impurity, passions, evil desires, greed, which all amount to idolatry. So he's saying keep your, eye, your mind off of those things and on Jesus, right? Then we'll go over to 1 Corinthians 1, excuse me, chapter 2. I wasn't even planning on going into all of these when I actually originally was going to shoot this video and then the, the, all these are just flooding my mind now. Um, the very end, it says, uh, a natural man does not accept the things of God, uh, or accept the spirit of God, accept the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to them, as unto non-believers. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. They have spiritual value. They don't have physical value. But he who is spiritually, who, he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have been given the mind of Christ. The word mind there in Greek means your thoughts, emotions, and will. Your thoughts, will, and emotion is what that word mind in Greek means. How you feel, how you think, and how that ends up actually playing out in real life, right? That's what those things are in reference to. Now we're going to go to probably the most popular one on this topic which is Romans 12, 2. It says, uh, well, I'll start in verse 1, but it says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. I won't go and read any more on that one because um, we could go down a totally different rabbit trail. But transformed by the renewal of your mind. How does your mind get re renewed daily? How, how does your mind get transformed? Well, you need to have consistent daily uh, revelation. You need to get revelation, uh, a Greek word for that is apocalypse. You need to have an apocalypse daily of God. And that's why people always assume the end times means uh, Apocalypse means the end times because the book Revelation, but the word Revelation is apocalypse in Greek. You having an apocalyptic lifestyle where you're always being revealed something by the Spirit of God is going to lead you to having a very, very um, fruitful thought life. It's actually, it's, it's a prayer of Paul's. Paul literally prays in Ephesians 1 that you and I would be given the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the spirit of wisdom and apocalypse. So we would be apocalypsed things on a daily basis from God. Now I'm going to go to, uh, I would say, maybe the second most popular passage of scripture on this concept of your thought life. <laughs> 1 
if you all want to turn there, um, if you are turning there. Um, if not, that's okay too. But uh, I'm, in, I'm in Philippians chapter 4. Um, starting in verse 4, it says, Rejoice always in the Lord. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious about nothing, um, but in prayer and supplication, make your thanks, in, in thanksgiving, make your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is um, pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there's anything excellence, if there's anything worthy to be praised, dwell on these things. The things that you have seen and learned and heard in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Again, the point is that you will be uh, needing to practice these things because it's not going to be something that happens just first time. I'm not going to turn there, but uh, Hebrews 12, um, you know, starting in verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay or let us run the race set before us with endurance, laying aside every sin and encumbrance which so easily entangles us, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself by sinners, so that you do not grow weary. Growing weary is a mindset. You don't physically grow weary. He's not talking about a physical race and physically growing weary. He's saying uh, a spiritual weariness. He's saying keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Mindset again. Mindset. Your eyes are fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, not your circumstances around you. 2 Corinthians 10, it says, um, take every thought captive and make them obedient to Christ. That we're supposed to have these thoughts come into our mind that are not from Jesus. And we're supposed to grab that thing and throw it down in the trash can. What does that look like literally, right? You in your life are thinking, I, I forget, I've looked up the number before. I think maybe I heard the number 40,000. I don't know if that was right or not. But 40,000 different thoughts go through your mind a day, I, I think. It might not be that. The point is there's a lot of thoughts that go through your mind every day. And what happens in your thought life every day will play an insignificant part in your life. Uh, Jesus says, uh, the eye is the lamp of the body. And if the light that comes into that eye is single, then the body is full of light. But if the light that comes into the eye is darkness, then how great is that darkness, right? A man uh, speaks what his heart is full of. Um, the whole point is from what is inside of you is going to overflow out of you. If you are at peace with God in your walk with him, if you believe rather, because you are at peace if you're a believer, you are at peace with God. But if you believe you're at peace with God, that's going to show through your life. If you believe you're made right with God, that's going to show through your life. If you believe that you've been given uh, empowerment from the Holy Spirit, then that's going to show in your life. If you don't believe in those things or believe those things, then those things are also going to show in your life. It's going to show in your life that you don't believe those things. And... The idea of your thought life being something that is from the Father, of the Father, biblical um, sound is so incredibly vital. If you do not have a thought life that would be something Jesus is pleased with, then the likelihood of you being able to run this race well with endurance is almost impossible. Uh, doesn't mean you can't run it, it just means you run it well. It's, it's going to be impossible. And what does this look like in everyday life? Well, so many Christians condemn themselves or believe that they're condemned or however you want to phrase that because of a thought that came into their mind. Let me, let me give you an example. You just watched um, porn a month ago. You, you had like a two-week stint or, or three-month stint, let's say, where you didn't touch porn. And it's been a month, and then you just watched it again. And it's like, oh my gosh. It's been a month since you watched it again. And you're like, oh my gosh. I cannot believe I did that again. Anyways, another month goes by from then. And you're spending your time in your, in your, in your prayer closet. And you're just, you know, God, you know, um, I just pray for my city. I pray for revival. And then instantly in your mind, you get a flashback of that last video that you watched. And you go, what was that? What most people do in that moment is they instantly get condemned. They instantly shut themselves down and, and it's, well, I guess I wasn't actually free. I guess I need to talk to an elder this Sunday. I guess I need to text my friend and ask him if he'll pray for me because, you know, thoughts are coming back. So I'm about to fall back into this thing. 
What if in that moment instead, you could just believe you're right with God, believe that you're a new creation in Christ, that old things really did pass away and all things really have become new. And in that moment, you can really just profess, you can just boldly exclaim, no, God, I thank you that I am free from this addiction of pornography. God, I thank you that, that you don't even remember my sin and that it's thrown into the sea of forgetfulness and the enemy can throw whatever he wants in my face. But God, I thank you that whenever he does throw something in my face, that it actually just brings me closer to you, God. And that I'm just going to proclaim your name more. And I'm just going to be able to, 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 to praise and, and give you glory in the fact that I am free, that, that whom the sun sets free is really free indeed. And that the spirit of the Lord is in me and where the spirit is, there is freedom. And I'm free from this and I'm free from the bondage of sin and the bondage of death. And God, I am a new creation in you and I never have to worry about falling back into any of those sins ever again. What if that's what your prayer life sounded like when the enemy tried to play with you? You know, the enemy only tries to mess with you in places that he believes that he can get you to mess up. When's the last time you had a strong temptation to stab somebody in the neck? I know, it's, I know it sounds goofy, but you're probably laughing too, going, never? Well, why? Because he knows it's something that he can't even, he can't even try to trick you in. Second Corinthians talks about how if we resist the devil, that he will flee from us. If we resist the devil, he'll flee from us. Meaning that there's probably a chance at some point the enemy was like, hey, stab that guy. And you're just like, that was the stupidest thought I've ever had in my life. And you just carry on with life. Well, if you resist him, he'll flee from you. Right? The enemy is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's looking, he's on the prowl, ready to pounce on somebody when he can find an opportunity to. And the enemy does not want you to look more like Jesus. You recognize that, right? So what that looks like applicably here is if he sees that you used to struggle with porn, he's probably going to keep prodding on that. If he sees that you used to struggle with smoking weed, he's probably going to prod you on that. If he sees that you used to struggle or even maybe are currently struggling with, with alcoholism or something like that, he's going to try to poke and prod you on those things. But the day that comes and you say, I am going to resist the devil and he will flee from me, that thought comes into your mind and you go, I know what the word of God says. I know my identity in Christ and nothing is going to change that. And God, I thank you. And then you just go in into praising Jesus. The enemy is going to stop tempting you in that space after a while. Why? Because why would he keep pushing that?